Android 4.1 or Jelly Bean may be an incremental update from Ice Cream Sandwich, but there are some key improvements. Generally, the look and feel is very much the same. So you have free on-screen touch controls, the multiple home screens and menus, all familiar territory. But now, notifications can be removed with a simple swipe and where supported, you can expand or collapse notifications. You can even snooze alarms for calendar events or email invited guests. Date and time info are now displayed prominently on the left as well and rotation lock has been added along with the name of your connected wireless network. Six customizable icons now sit at the bottom of the screen and can be arranged into folders, but particularly impressive are the new gestures. To delete something, for example, you simply flick it off the screen. Auto rearrangement of icons or widgets is pretty nifty too. Now, while the interface is largely the same, there are fewer bugs and general navigation is much slicker. The app tray opens instantly, menus and applications seem to open a lot faster and scrolling is ultra smooth both within apps and outside and swiping through screens is speedy and responsive. This is where Google's Project Butter comes in which is essentially Google's attempt to destroy lag and make Android smoother and more responsive and it's certainly improved. It's more responsive to the touch and allows for faster browsing, searching and access to media content but as it stands it's difficult to assess Project Butter objectively. The real test will be how it performs on less power devices. Then there's Google Now, which takes search results to a whole new level as it attempts to second guess what you might be coming to look for based on previous searches while making use of your location, diary, travel info and everything else Google knows about you to automatically organise your life accordingly. Information is presented in cards, so it will show you how long it will take to get to a destination based on a Google Maps search, for example, taking into account traffic. It can even tell you what bus to take and when the next one is going to arrive. The results are very much dependent on how you interact with Google, so in theory, it's always one step ahead, but it's reliant on a data connection and results are inconsistent. For example, calendar appointments and nearby places don't always show up and the weather card will often disappear for no apparent reason. And while it's a comprehensive list, these cards have less to offer beyond weather and navigation, but it is a feature that promises to get better with time. Voice control is good though, it's no Siri, but searching for local restaurants and bars is impressively accurate and swift, and information is presented much cleaner than before. You can also ask questions and be read the answers for basic things like word definition, the time or weather. It's 19 degrees and mostly cloudy in London. Here's the forecast for the next few days. Nice. Many of Google's default apps have been overhauled too, and they look good. YouTube's graphics, for example, look awesome. And finally, Google has introduced the rather attractively designed magazines for the latest media content at your fingertips. But in terms of quality and content, it's not quite as polished as Apple's offering. And the keyboard's been improved. Prediction is significantly better, throwing up on-screen choices, as well as giving you the option to speak instead of type. Now it's early days for Jelly Bean and as Flash support no longer exists, Flash dependent services like BBC's iPlayer will have to update for Jelly Bean users. With Ice Cream Sandwich still being rolled out across handsets, launching a new version with a new name gives the sense that everybody is out of date. And while Jelly Bean doesn't bring a whole heap of new features to the table, it's definitely made its mark. Overall, everything's just a lot smoother. And it just means that Android has made that all-important step into offering a more refined and finger-friendly user experience.